Hey y'all, welcome to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, this is my garden, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about tomato maintenance. Now some of you may live in an area where the humidity is very low and you have no problem sticking a tomato plant in the ground and pulling in lots of harvest, but for many of us in the world that's really just not our experience growing tomatoes. Maybe you've tried in the past and your plants were puny or they got spots on them, shriveled up, um, and died before you got much harvest at all. Or maybe they got so bushy and overwhelming that trying to contain them was really difficult. Perhaps you bought one of these little things at the store because it said tomato support on it and you quickly learned that it really wasn't going to be sufficient for the plant you'd put in it. Now, I love growing tomatoes. <laughs> it's actually my favorite thing to grow in the garden and probably not coincidentally also my favorite thing to eat out of the summer garden. And I've taken great care in getting this right so that I could have as many tomatoes as possible. <laughs> now, as in the case of all things pertaining to the garden, there's really not one right way to do things. So today I'm going to tell you how I do things. I'm growing in South Carolina zone 8. It is very hot and humid here. Prior to living here I lived in central Arkansas. was also hot and humid. However, I have heard from people who have successfully grown tomatoes in this fashion um, from all over the place. So here are my tomatoes and they have been not they have not been tied to the trellis at all. We've just gotten a massive burst of growth in the last week. So now I'm doing a little bit of pruning and securing them to the support. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the trellising system. Uh, these are 16 foot cattle panels that we get at the local farm store. They're attached to seven foot T posts. They didn't come this color. We spray painted them because I like colorful things. As you can see here, they're just attached with zip ties all the way up so that it's nice and sturdy. Tomatoes have one of two growth habits, either determinate or indeterminate. A determinate tomato is going to get to be a determined height and they're not necessarily small plants. Sometimes they can get five feet tall as well and they don't just keep growing. They have a determined amount of blossoms that they're going to set. Indeterminate tomatoes will continue to grow as long as they are kept healthy and supported nutritionally. Now most of the tomatoes that you purchase for a summer garden are indeterminate tomatoes unless otherwise specified. So if you buy like a bush tomato or a patio tomato, those are determinate varieties. If you don't know what kind of tomato you're growing, what kind of seeds you have, just Google it, put the name in, and it's pretty easy to pull up. For some reason, they don't always put it on seed packets because the assumption is it's probably indeterminate. Today, I'm talking about trellising and pruning, and for the most part, this is applied to indeterminate tomatoes. If you have determinate varieties, like a bush variety or a patio variety, you wouldn't necessarily want to prune them this heavily, heavily because you're going to severely impact how much harvest you get. Since indeterminate varieties can get very tall as they'll continue growing as long as you're supporting them, uh, usually by the end of the season my tomatoes far surpass the top of this trellis sometimes they'll fall over and kind of start growing back down and that's okay I don't really worry about supporting them once we get past that point because usually here in the humid south once they're 10 feet tall they're probably also kind of sick from the humidity so as you can see I have attached this trellis about 18 inches or so up. The main reason we do that is to give us more support at the top because that's really where they're going to need the support as they get really tall whereas down here it won't matter that they're not attached. The other thing is, is it gives me a guideline. Eventually I want to have every branch that's growing underneath this trellis pruned off. So all I have growing down here is stems just to allow all the airflow to go through and it helps keep all the plants in the bed healthy. I plant these tomatoes about every 20 inches or so apart. I do not measure this. Sometimes it's closer to like 18 inches. Sometimes it's probably closer to 22. And as you can see here, I actually don't really start worrying about pruning or trellising until they've actually gotten large enough to reach the bottom of the trellis. So this is my first big tomato maintenance of this year. So today I'm going to go through and prune my tomatoes and I'm going to attach them to the trellis. Tomato plants are not natural climbers. So if you grow like a bean plant or a cucumber underneath a trellis, they'll actually grow tendrils out to grab onto whatever they can and they will naturally climb. Tomatoes, not so at all. Tomatoes actually, if left alone without our intervention will fall over on the ground. They will grow a main stalk along the ground and then lots and lots of offshoots. They'll actually root all along that main stalk. The offshoots will shoot up into the air. The only problem with that is, is the fruit will also lay on the ground, meaning that 
by the time you go to pick it, it's probably gonna be full of critters. Another thing is, is tomato plants are pretty fussy about getting dirty and wet. They don't like a lot of splashback, which is why I was mentioning pruning off all of the bottom branches. They're very prone to getting sick if when you water, there's soil touching the plants. Thus, we trellis our tomatoes. That's where you see the tomato cages and different structures that holds them upright off the ground to hopefully keep them healthy and pest free. But since they aren't natural climbers, we have to help them out. Now today I just have like this little foam tie stuff. I also like using this really thin stretchy plastic tie tape. It's really affordable. I'll link both of these. I'll tell you I prefer the tie tape because it's cheaper. I just had a container of this and I didn't realize I was out of tie tape. So I ordered some and decided to use this for now because these obviously really need some attention. You can also use bits of twine. You can use cut up old t-shirts. Remember you are going to want to cut these off at the end of the year and um, the more sturdy the material you use the harder it is going to be to get them off the trellises so you kind of want to find the balance between something that can hold them on the trellises while you want them on there but something that by the end of the season will be relatively brittle and weak that you can rip them off or else you're going to spend a lot of time cutting i'll often get asked regarding these trellises if you can grow tomatoes on each side and the answer is no uh, this should be considered one row of tomatoes so this is going to support one row because if you think if you have plants planted right next to each other growing up the same space it's not really providing the airflow that they're really going to need so when i come in to trellis a plant like this i automatically cut off anything that's low um, i typically will just take all of my branches and throw them down in the beds because they're just going to break down and go back as nutrition in the soil you can obviously clean them out if you want if they are sick at all and spotted you want to take them out and burn them just to make sure you're not spreading any disease so here let me tell you, show you what happened here so the way tomato plants split is they actually grow extra branches in their armpits okay and here's one that got away from me so this one split and probably about a uh, two weeks ago or so this one sprouted here and I did not cut it off and so now I have two main stems that is not necessarily a problem for me ideally I like to have one main stem most things in my garden are, are not ideal like very rarely do things go ideal in my garden so uh, in the case of this where I have two main stems could make a choice to cut this off on one side but I don't really feel like that's necessary I'm just gonna support both, but I am gonna cut off some of these other lower branches. And I'm gonna tie this plant here. I'm gonna tie this plant here. So I'm gonna give it two points of support on the trellis. Let me show you here. Here's another sucker that got away. And I'm gonna show you guys what suckers look like when they're small, but there's another offshoot branch that got away. I am gonna go ahead and cut that one off because I don't want this plant to be way too bushy. Okay, so I'm just taking off some foliage. You don't wanna to take too much because then your fruit will get sun scald. So my plant supported and here I'm going to show you this is what a tomato sucker looks like. That's a small one and it's where you have these branches that are shooting off the main stem. They will grow new growth in the armpits and you want to pull these off if you're pruning. People have different opinions on how you should prune a tomato plant. So if this sucker were allowed to continue to grow this is where this plant would produce more flowers and therefore more fruit. So the idea is, wait, aren't I cutting into my harvest by cutting off the suckers? And that really depends on a couple of things. One, if you live in an incredibly humid area, just growing a tomato plant as it grows, it will become very, very bushy, very, very dense, and likely very, very sick. It truly can wipe out your plants before you get much of a harvest at all without giving them some sort of airflow to make sure that they're protected from disease. The other thing is, is that by taking off some of the fruit, you actually end up with much larger fruit. The plant is still growing a fantastic root system and it's actually able to put more energy into producing the fruits that it does set. Uh, so it's very common for me in my garden growing tomatoes this way to have one pound plus fruits. I remember one year that if, fruit, if it came in under 16 ounces, I thought, wow, this is a small tomato. It's very common. I've had fruits up to three pounds before. The other thing to consider is that I'm growing twice as many plants because I am pruning my plants down to one or two main stems and removing a lot of those extra branches I can actually put a plant every 18 or 20 inches whereas if you allow a tomato plant to bush out entirely it needs a space that's like three or four feet circumference so that's a very large space you're looking at like a 12 to 18 inch footprint versus a like 10 square foot footprint on a regular tomato plant so you got to think you can fit a lot more plants in the space 
with this method. Ultimately, you just kind of have to settle out what you want to do. If you're unsure, I would suggest trying to grow some both ways and test your area and your specific garden and your gardening habits. So do you want to come out and prune tomatoes every week during the season? Maybe not, in which case maybe you should see how they do without pruning. But for me, this is how I have found to be the most successful way to grow the big, juicy heirloom slicers that I'm looking for. All right, on to the next plant. Here I've got a couple of splits that happened down low, some branches I'm cutting off. Now, had I been paying more attention earlier, these would have been pruned off earlier. And as I said, that would have probably been ideal, but here we are. This one ended up with two splits as well. Now we'll show you something here. If I have a plant setting fruit down low, I usually go ahead and leave that. I pruned off all the other leaves and branches down that low. Um, the reason is that fruit is going to set here pretty quick. It's going to come right pretty early and that branch will be done with by the time the summer really ramps up. That's not crazy common, but especially when this plant has gotten this big, it's not crazy uncommon either. Here I've got some little baby suckers in the armpits. I'm going to pull these off and then I will go ahead and support these. This is Zucchini. She's my garden kitty. <laughs> She's pretty sure we're best friends and then anytime I sit down with this big black contraption that I'm constantly talking to, what I really mean is that I want her to come love on me. And bear too. <laughs> All right, so if you are in need of more tomato plants and you have a couple of tomato plants, you can always have more tomato plants. So these little guys here, um, when you pull them off, if you need more plants, just put them in some water. I will tell you if they're, if they're very, very large, they can have a hard time rooting. They might shock a little bit, but I like to grab them off about this size. Maybe they could be about twice this size. They can be four to six inches or so is about as big as I like to go uh, before you might, oh, zucchini. <laughs> before you might start seeing issues. You just prune these off your plant, as I'm showing you, and stick this in water. You can put some rooting agent in it, but you don't have to, they will root without it. And you, they will start growing roots out of the bottom in about a week or so, and then just plant them in some soil. Now, I have before just taken them off and stuck them in the ground, and I have had them grow that way. But if it's already pretty hot outside, they could really struggle and you might not have a ton of success. It, the best bet is to put them in some water or into some like really good wet potting soil that has some bottom water where they're gonna stay really damp. And then yeah, you can multiply your tomatoes and get lots more plants by just rooting suckers. A really great thing to do is mid-summer if you live in a long season place. Go ahead and pull some suckers off and get them rooted and basically start those plants fresh, plant them out, and then you'll be harvesting a second wave in like October, assuming that it's not already frozen in your area. So you'll see me do some hand picking where I'm picking suckers off or breaking branches off and sometimes I use clippers. Essentially, uh, you want a clean break. You want a clean cut. So if they're very large at all or if the skins of your tomato branches have started to like toughen up, you definitely want to use clippers because if you go to tear them and it rips a long part of that outer skin of the tomato plant off, you're, you're basically just opening it up to be susceptible to disease. So a clean cut is best, but if they're small and tender, you can pretty much just pinch them off with your fingers. All right, one row down. One question I thought of while I was pruning those that people ask me a lot is, is it the same for cherry tomatoes? Uh, these actually are all cherry tomatoes. This row right here by the pavilion, um, I decided to grow the cherry tomatoes here so we could easily snack on them and the way I usually do it is I start pruning my cherry tomatoes like this so that they're not crazy wild like I'm pulling all of these large sucker branches off the bottom 12 inches of the plant which would lead to so much bushiness that it could be a problem uh, but I prune them like this to one or two main stems and once they get about three or four feet high I lax off on pulling off the sucker so they can get bushier and therefore set more fruit towards the end of the season. Now for slicers, I will continue to prune off all suckers for pretty much the entirety of the season until I reach the point that I just don't really care anymore, which usually is past tomatoes being prime anyway. When it starts getting over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius every day, tomatoes aren't setting new fruit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But on the cherries, I start out strong like this and after probably like six weeks from now, I'll pretty much stop, stop pruning them. The other tip, 
tips that I wanted to give you, there's two that will really help as far as tomato maintenance goes and making sure that your plants thrive and give you the most harvest. Uh, the first thing, the next thing that is really important is mulching around the bottom of the soil. So you're seeing all these branches I cut down, as I said, I just throw them in the bed and let them break down and go back to the soil. But I do have this straw here that I'm gonna pull in around the bottom of my plants. I just want all the soil around them covered. This is all pushed back from when I was planting these. You can mulch with a number of things. I am using straw that I know was not sprayed by any sort of broadleaf herbicides. You need to be very mindful if you are sourcing hay or straw for mulch. You can't just go buy it anywhere because unfortunately in the world we live in today, we're dealing with a lot of poisons ending up on home gardens and killing them. So definitely be mindful of where you source that. I uh, also found some great mushroom compost this year that's still just a little woody. Uh, that would make a really great mulch. You can use leaf mold, which is leaves gathered up from like the bottom of a forest floor or that you raked up out of your yard last year. Wood chip mulch that has been broken down for at least a year so it's good and crumbly and soil-like. All of those things will work. The things you don't want to use are those mulches you buy at the store that have dyes on them. Definitely don't do that. Or obviously anything that's like rubber. But covering the soil is going to be very beneficial to tomatoes because as I mentioned earlier they do not like soil splashback. So by covering the soil you're allowing the soil to stay more moist which will make for a stronger root system and a stronger soil structure. Healthy soil means healthy plants and also it is keeping that soil from splashing back up on the plant itself spreading disease. My last tip today for tomato success is when you are watering your tomato plants make sure you are watering them long and deep. You want to water at the base of the plant as much as possible. I am moisture on the foliage can lend to disease. It is best to water your plants at the base of the plant. Obviously you can't control when they get rained on, but base watering is best for the reason I mentioned earlier with the splash back and all of that as well as damp foliage just doesn't lead to healthy plants. The other thing is is to water for a long time every couple of days or every few days even if your atmosphere allows for that rather than watering shallowly every day. So instead of just coming by and quickly wetting the top of the soil for 15 seconds it's best to allow that water to sit ideally with a soaker hose over the course of 30 minutes if possible. But if you're watering by hand, what I like to do is I like to hold the, the water at the base of the tomato for at least a good 30 to 90 seconds before moving on to the next plant. Uh, if you want to check your soil to make sure that it is actually deeply watered, just stick your finger in it. Um, if it's wet down a few knuckles deep, then you know that you're getting a good deep watering in. Mulch also helps with that. It's going to help that soil retain moisture. A deeply watered tomato plant is going to send its roots down deep rather than wide and it's just going to be a stronger plant. The other benefit to infrequent watering that is deeper and longer rather than being more brief and shallow is that it will actually lend to having better tasting tomatoes. So the best time to harvest a tomato is when the plant is just borderline dry. Um, in the middle of the afternoon when the sun is at its height, when the plant hasn't been watered for a couple days or hasn't been rained on for a couple days, you're going to get the most concentrated sugars in that fruit and that is where you're going to get that optimum homegrown flavor that makes you want to bring salt out to the garden and just sit there in the soil and eat it. I really hope you get to experience that this year. I know I am totally looking forward to that sitting in the soil moment. These are my tomato tips. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time. Oh hey, one last tomato tip here after the end. Uh, after you work on tomatoes, you're going to have this resin all over your fingers, also called tomato tar. It's really gnarly looking. It smells like tomatoes and it's hard to get off with soap and water. But if you use something acidic like white vinegar, lemon essential oil, or even just lemon juice, it'll come right off. All right, really. I bless you until next time. <laughs>